So let's start with the story of three users. Um, Jack found a tool who, which sounds useful to what he wants to do, but he can't figure out how it works. So he goes looking for some documentation, as you do, but there are none. So a lack of documentation is bad. Um, Jill found a useful tool too. Um, it has documentation, so she will eventually use it. Um, good documentation tells people how to use your product, which is pretty obvious, really, isn't it? Yuck's found a tool too, uh, but he can't understand what it says because, <laughs> because while this documentation is good, he can't understand documentation that's not in a language he can read. So you, excellent documentation is supposed to be available for everyone, not just English-speaking people. So what does this mean? You've got to put lots of effort into your documentation and learn all these languages so you can write documentation in it. You just have to make it easy for other people to be able to do that. If you build it, the documentation people will come, if you build the infrastructure. So what I do for my day job is I work full time on Mahara, which is an open source e-portfolio system. Our main users are students and educators. And if you can, you know, the average teacher and their technical ability is not necessarily equal with that of the people in this room. So we have a comprehensive user manual. The problem is currently this manual is in English, only in English, which is something we want to solve. And our requirements for this are basically we want to make it really, 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 really easy for translators to come along and translate our English documentation into their own language. We want to have it be one set of um, source. Um, we are using Sphinx, so having people learn um, restructured text to be able to document stuff which really they just need to know what this says and what it should say in their own language. And images need to be translated too. Now, when it's not just talking about small-ish kind of images, when you have user documentation for a tool that teachers are going to want to use and stuff like that, there tend to be screenshots. Um, so it's not a matter of having a sign, a picture of a sign that is in English that you want to have a Spanish translation for. The images have a lot of text that needs to be redone, really, for the documentation in this other language. Um, so we want to be able to have a way to put in the correct language um, screenshots so people can understand what they're looking at. And we want to be able to support non-Latin scripts. <laughs> He's happy, Grant's happy. Um, such as, you know, Japanese or Thai or even if you want to have your little Unicode poop symbol in there somewhere for whatever reason. Um, I think the main case for our documentation is our documentator wants to use Unicode arrows instead of um, hyphen greater than. That's the right direction? Whatever. Um, <laughs> but out of the box, Sphinx kind of does Japanese. It has a separate little bit of script in the make file for Japanese. Um, and it's actually what, we've, what I have based all this on, is reappropriating the Japanese version of the, the compiler of the RST documentation through LaTeX into PDF. Um, but really, what we want, nothing else does yet properly. 
at least not that I know about. If you know of something that I, that's going to work perfectly, please do come and tell me. I'll be very happy to know. Um, so how to make Sphinx do magic? As I said before, I piggybacked on top of the stuff for the Japanese translation, uh, the Japanese compiler. Um, and because it's makefile driven, because Sphinx is makefile driven, um, I can intercept it and rewrite the make files and do, you know, have scripts to pre-process stuff, have um, loops to go over the languages. So you have a list of languages and each language gets looped over with a, whatever needs to be done for that language. So to start with, I pull the translations down from Launchpad, um, which is, then you've got to put them through um, message format because Launchpad exports MO, but Sphinx needs PO, um, or at least that's the way that we're, we're pulling them down, which was the safer way. Um, then we need to swap to a different um, LaTeX compiler because by default LaTeX isn't very good with Unicode. Um, and we chose Zelotex because it handled Unicode. A lot of all, lot of this um, stuff has been to do with dealing with Unicode. Um, so using some good old fashioned patching. Um, there's general patches for um, inserting little extra bits for the Zelotex into the generated LaTeX file that gets compiled. Uh, there's some locale patches for um, swapping the fonts because having a font appropriate to your language is very useful and helpful. Um, and there's some unsupported locales. Now what this means is that Sphinx itself does not support the locale, which is fine for HTML, EPUB, one other format, but it's not okay for LaTeX. And because you don't have the... Um, because you don't have a Sphinx PO file anywhere on your system, for that locale, it won't even use the getx to bring the translation over, unless you just copy, for instance, the English Sphinx.po over and rename it. And then it works, which you should not have to do that. Um, for the localised images, what we've really just done is added a git submodule, which is a repository of various languages, um, versions of the images. So we, at, um, when we run the make file, the make file copies the images over the top of the English ones. And because this is git based, it can reset them back. So it uses check out, git checkouts to take it back to the default English version and each time it loops over the language, it um, just copies them directly over the top and when it's finished, it git checkouts and they go back to clean. It's very filthy. <laughs> and I can see Rob grimacing in the front before. Um, so yeah, the copies the images over the top of the English ones for each build. And because you're going to have various um, places where these images are sourced from, they're not necessarily going to have been done in a way that follows strict instructions or anything like that. And one of the problems with going from the ordinary latex to Zelotex, or even if I was to go to Lutex, is 
they don't respect the DPI of the images. So we were getting some very big images appearing in our PDF documents. Um, this is the make file that started off as three lines. Um, this is now what it is to be able to do all these little things. Um, yeah, it's really disgusting. So first it copies a um, the sphinx.mo for the unsupported languages. Then it copies the images over the top of the um, English ones for the translated versions. Then um, I can't read it from down here, actually. <laughs> it converts the DPI, um, does all sorts of patching. <laughs> then right there in the middle, it actually builds everything. Um, no, no, the second block is where it's building everything. The third block is where it's running the make file, oh, because, yeah, the clean stuff doesn't need all that patching, so. Um, then we have it rolling back all the patching and disgusting stuff. Finally, we then just, you know, add an extra checkout for the images for safe sanity reasons. So, yeah, it is revolting. Um, but this is the end result. It's not actually uh, a live version or anything like this. This is just a screenshot I took of a PDF so I could demonstrate that it, you know, actually does replace the images. Um, that's for the Japanese version. And that was a while ago. Um, so he has actually done some translations, just not on that particular document. But, of course, it's not perfect yet. Currently, I'm at the state where, depending on the machine I build this on, it may or may not shrink some images. And I've got no idea why. So, um, yeah, it's really a work in progress. But it's been an adventure. I think I've gone a bit too fast, haven't I? Huh? Yep. Um, questions? <coughs> questions? How many translations do you have before? Currently... <laughs> 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 What's the translator uptake been for it? Have you got a lot of translations? Um, there's several who are getting updates from us. Because none of this is live yet. So we don't have the uptake yet. But there are lots of, there's the French people, the German people, the Japanese people at least, who are aware this is coming and are excited to try it out, but time restraints and all that sort of stuff just mean that they haven't. And because we haven't actually deployed it live, they haven't, can't see the magic. We have to give them updates at the moment. Um, anyone else? Oh, up the back there, <laughs> Mr. Happy. So what the camera wouldn't have seen before is when the Unicode slide came up, Grant jumped, pretty much jumped up and danced. Right, hi. Um, the screenshots we have, you know, like a, a screenshot with all the text in it, how do you um, auto-generate the actual, how do you handle that? Do you just sit down yourself manually go into the operating system like, you know, Mac or something like that, or, sorry, not operating system, into the other language, display it, screenshot it, save the image and call it something, or do you have some process where you can sort of automate that? We don't have any way of automating yeah. the, langu the, um, the images yet. Yeah. But there probably is a way to do it that would probably involve having a server out in the wild with a full Inkscape, Inkscape um, installation on it, and that's not going to be very popular with the people who want to main, be the people administrating this server. 
Yeah, so it's a manual process. At the moment, yeah, it's a manual process. Yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, there's probably perfectly easy ways to do this with um, uh, with Inkscape being XML. Mm. Um, but you're still stuck with the the fact that you've got to have the the translated versions of the um, of the actual website, right? Um, with the correct user data and all that kind of stuff in there. So, if you want to demonstrate a forum, and the forum is all in English, it may not sink in to someone who's not quite that experienced with forums. So, yep. yeah. Thanks, Grant. Anybody else got any questions? No? OK, so because you're going through all that pain, Melissa, you're shortening the learning curve for everybody else, I'm sure we'd all <laughs> like to give Melissa a big hand. Thank you.